The calling cards in Black Ops 3 are amazingly well done. The master calling cards, however, are on a completely different level since they're all animated. And there's one master calling card that always gets everyone's attention in a lobby. I'm referring to, of course, the Return Fire Master. The pink background instantly steals the gaze of someone browsing players in a lobby. And the animation, well, it's just icing on the cake. Unfortunately, the challenge that likely prevents you from earning this calling card is extremely difficult to accomplish. And that's the Power Down Challenge. Destroy an enemy power core five times. This doesn't sound difficult at all. And really, it wouldn't be an issue if the score streak was prevalent. Sadly though, hardly anyone runs the power core. It's challenges like these that rely on quite a bit of luck, considering you can't force anyone to run certain score streaks. If you do happen to find an enemy power core, more often than not, the entire lobby goes berserk. In objective game modes, enemies will straight up ignore the objective to have a chance at destroying the coveted power core. As soon as one gets called in, you'll see the kill feed light up with people killing themselves so that they can switch to their power core destroying class. It's like a bug light. People will just blindly run to it, not even caring how many times they may die. And if you want to be a jerk store, run the power core yourself, place it in the center of the map and lurk nearby. You can rack up some very easy kills this way. The power core is everyone's white whale in Black Ops 3. The problem with this is that it hampers your own ability to destroy one should it get called in. More often than not, if you do manage to find one and start shooting it, a willy wankin' wiswog teammate will swoop in, put one bullet into it, and destroy it right from under your nose. And I'll admit, I'm also guilty of doing this exact same thing. It's every man for himself when it comes to destroying the power core. Now with that said, I'm gonna try and help everyone as much as possible in this video. My two goals are as follows, to give you a better shot at actually finding a power core, and more importantly, to give you the best method to take one out should the opportunity arise. As I mentioned earlier, the thing that makes this challenge next to impossible is the rarity of the power core streak itself. I think Treyarch realized how underused it actually was recently, as they buffed it. It used to cost 1400 points to achieve and lasted 45 seconds. Now it costs 1250 points to achieve and lasts a full 60 seconds. This buff is huge to challenge seekers. One of the biggest issues people had was actually getting to the power core in time. While the 15 second time buff may not seem huge, it basically gives you at least two more spawn attempts to try and reach your white whale should you keep getting slaughtered and route to it. Despite the point of this video being to help you finish the power down challenge, I did want to briefly mention that the power core is one of the best streaks in the game in an attempt to encourage skilled players to run it. It destroys any streak in the game instantly, it completely shuts down your enemy's minimap, and it destroys any currently deployed equipment. Let's say an enemy is camping his dick off near a deployed C4 or trip mine and you call in a power core. This will instantly detonate their deployed item and blow them up in the process. The power core also weakens enemy thrust movement, which extremely limits their ability to effectively boost jump and wall run. Not only this, but if you're not running the hardwired perk, you can't call in any score streak or use any specialist weapon or ability. Of course, players with the hardwired perk do not suffer any of these effects from the power core. So if you're capable of earning the power core, do all the challenge seekers a favor and run it. You'll likely even get a message thanking you for doing so. So back to the first issue at hand, actually finding power cores to destroy. If you've watched some of my prior videos, you'll know I try to explore every possible method for completing challenges. Unfortunately, this challenge is set in its ways. You simply cannot force people to run the streak. Sadly, the hardcore trick of destroying teammates power cores or even your own does not work. I tried every method I could think of to try to make this challenge easier, but I failed to find any effective way to cheat the system. But with that said, I'm sure several of you have figured out that there is one method to aid you in this, and that's to run the care package. By running the care package, you have a remote chance of getting the power core out of one. What many people fail to take into consideration is that if you actually earn a power core from a care package in a team-based game mode, chances are your teammates are going to gank it. The entire point of this strategy is to let the enemy take it. Unless you're running with a full party of five other teammates that you can specifically tell to leave the care package for the enemy, this is not going to work. To remedy this, you must play free-for-all. By doing so, you eliminate the greedy teammates since every person is an enemy. Now I consider myself a decently skilled player and I have a 1.9 KD in free-for-all. But at maximum, I can typically only earn 2-3 to three care packages a match. I realize not everyone is capable of even earning a care package, so I'm going to outline a class that will help you do so. As much as I hate people camping, for lesser skilled players to even dream of earning a care package in free-for-all, that's what we're going to have to do. I call this the camp your dick off class. 
You can use whatever weapon you're comfortable with, but I personally recommend an assault rifle so you don't have to worry about close quarters combat. For perks, in Tier 1 you need 6 cents. This will allow you to sense any nearby enemies you may not otherwise hear. And speaking of hearing, in Tier 3 you'll need dead silence and awareness. Silencing your own Bozo the Clown footsteps as well as amplifying your enemies is essential for a good worm squirm camping technique. In Tier 2 you have some options. I recommend Fast Hands and Annie Up. However, you can exchange Fast Hands for Tracker if you want. I realize Annie Up is pretty horrible, but it's still a free plus 100 points to earning the care package, which knocks it down to only 450 points. The reason I recommend Fast Hands is because I also suggest using the Quick Draw attachment. You should never run Quick Draw without Fast Hands. You can do what you please with the rest of your class points, but I highly recommend either C4 or a Shock Charge, which will help you guard your flank with the C4 being way more effective, especially since few people run flak jacket in free-for-all. For score streaks, make sure you have the UAV and the dart equipped. You'll see why I recommend the dart towards the end. As for a specialist, we'll cover that shortly as well. Your goal is to play as defensively as you can. Stick to the outskirts of the map and use your assault rifle to its potential to pick off SMG users. Don't rush into close quarters death traps. Try and use your sound horn perks to the best of your ability. Remember, all you need is five kills. If and when you finally do earn a care package, you need to switch to your power core destroying class and kill yourself. I'll be going over that class in the second part of this video. Once you respawn with your new class, then call in the care package. This class, as you'll see, will have the engineer perk equipped. Once the care package comes in, you'll then be able to re-roll it should it not be a power core. One thing to note here, do not call the care package in at the back of the map. You want your enemies to take it, remember. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten a power core in a care package only to have no one take it. Even when firing my gun aimlessly to attract enemies, no one ever comes. A care package will only persist for 1 minute and 30 seconds until it vanishes. To my knowledge, no one knows the exact odds of receiving items in a care package. So I decided to do a test and see. I realize this is an extremely small sample size, but it does give us a good idea of how likely it is to actually receive a power core. So I went into a private match with a few helpers and lowered the cap time of the domination flag. We then called in 166 care packages in total. I tallied each and every streak we received and documented it. And here's the results I found. I have no idea why the sentry gun was so prevalent, but it was popping up as much as some of the lower streaks. I didn't receive a single talon or mothership. Speaking of the mothership, it was confirmed just today by a Black Ops 3 developer by the name of Matt that there is absolutely zero chance of earning the mothership in a care package. And our white whale? Well, it's about a 1.2% chance. I received two power cores in all 166 packages. I should also note that Matt the developer also stated that re-rolling a care package with engineer gives better odds for higher score streaks, which is exactly what we need given the low percentage of earning a power core. So while this free-for-all method is ideal, it's still going to take a lot of care packages and a lot of luck. Not to mention we also then have to destroy the power core, which takes us into part two of this challenge. So many times I've seen people use the worst methods to destroy a power core. I've also seen a lot of incorrect myths about the best ways to take one out. As you should know, I like to be thorough. And as such, I tested each and every method in the entire game for taking one out. I couldn't have done this without the help of two fellow YouTubers, Onion Rings and Twin Projects. Their channel links can be found in the description. I'm sure they'd be thrilled if you stop by and tell them thanks. Now I'm not going to show you every method since that would take forever, but I will show you some of the faster ones. To start with, let me show you the standard black cell launcher method. So it takes three rockets from the black cell to destroy a power core, and the fastest time you can hope to do this in is about 8.5 seconds. It used to be a lot faster, but since they nerfed the reload cancel on the black cell, this is the best time you'll get. For most people, this is the ideal way to destroy a power core. But it's not the fastest, nor is it the most efficient method, as you'll soon see. In fact, I highly recommend you not use this method, mainly due to the inconsistent nature of the rockets versus the power core. The rockets can sometimes get deflected. It doesn't happen every time, but it does happen. So not only can they be deflected, sometimes they can go through the power core itself. Sometimes it's like the rockets will do a rogue Kamehameha blast. They'll do a few loop-de-loops around the map before coming back to the intended destination. Like I said, the power core is rare enough as it is. You definitely don't want to blow your chance at destroying one due to a rocket misfire. Now allow me to put to rest a few myths. I've seen a lot of people say to use the EMP grenades to help you destroy power cores, and this is horrible advice. Anyone who suggests this has never tested them. EMP grenades do next to no damage on the power core, 
I had over six people throwing two EMP grenades every life at the power core, and in no instance did it ever destroy or even weaken the power core in the full 60 second time frame. Do not use EMP grenades against the power core. Next, I've seen people say that Firebreak's heatwave ability can instantly destroy a power core, and this is also false. As you can see, this is a fresh power core based on the Black Cell Launcher's data. It displays 59 seconds remaining and three rockets to destroy. I used the heatwave ability and check it again. All it did was lower its health by one rocket. Now don't get me wrong, this can definitely aid you in finishing off a power core, but it will not instantly destroy it. I've also heard people say that you have to destroy the individual rotating armored plates before you can take out a power core. I've also read that you can't shoot the glowing white center as it won't do any damage. As it turns out, both of these are false. You can see here that I only destroyed two out of the four panels on this power core. I then proceed to shoot only in the glowing white center and eventually it blows up. I will say the panels do play a role in how fast you can destroy a power core, but you'll see that in just a moment. Let me show you a few weapon times now. Some people may note that LMGs are likely great candidates for taking out power cores fast since they have the biggest magazines, and this is mostly true. However, some non-LMG weapons also fit this role. I need to note that every weapon I tested has the same three attachments, rapid fire, extended mags, and FMJ. You must have all three of these equipped for maximum benefit. So first up, the KN-44 and the Shiva are two of the best assault rifles against the power core. The KN-44 can take one out in 3.97 seconds using 41 out of the 42 rounds. The issue here is that if you miss more than two shots, it'll be game over since you'll be forced to reload. And when every second counts, you don't want to have to do this. In comparison, the Shiva can take out a power core in 6.32 seconds using all 28 rounds of its ammo. So again, if you miss a shot, you'll be forced to reload. As for the SMGs, due to the magazine size, very few can take out a power core in one clip. Even the powerful CUDA cannot successfully take out one without reloading. The Weevil, on the other hand, can, thanks to its 70 round capacity with extended mags. It'll take a mere 4.1 seconds and use 53 out of the 70 bullets. So you have some legroom to work with should you miss a few shots. As for LMGs, they'll all destroy a power core in a similar amount of time, with the exception of the Gorgon, which is definitely slower than the other three. The fastest one is the Dingo. It takes 4.18 seconds and uses 54 out of the 112 rounds. I'd be comfortable saying that with the LMGs you can safely exclude the extended mags attachment. But you still absolutely need FMJ and rapid fire. For sniper rifles, the P06 is actually faster than the Draken at taking out a power core. It takes 4.12 seconds for the P06 and uses 18 out of the 21 bullets. Whereas the Draken takes 4.4 seconds, but it uses less bullets as it takes 21 out of the 28. The results for the rest of the weapons I tested can be found after the outro of this video in a table I constructed. If you don't see a weapon listed there, that means it could not destroy a power core in a clip or less. As I mentioned earlier, the hardwired perk completely counters a power core, which allows score streaks and specialist weapons to destroy the power core as well. Take note that you must control the score streak yourself for this to work. An AI controlled score streak can and will take out a power core. However, you will not receive the light switch medal, which is what counts as a notch towards this challenge. With that said, there's five streaks that can take out a power core. The dart, the Cerberus, the Talon, the sentry gun, and the power core itself. The power core against itself is the fastest method in the entire game as it's instantaneous. However, there's a stipulation. Besides the fact that not everyone can even earn a power core, the power core must have all its panels in order to be destroyed. So this power core currently takes three black cell rockets to destroy and it has all four of its panels blown off. I deploy my own power core against it, but it doesn't get destroyed. Rechecking the black cell data screen shows that it did do damage, as now it only needs two rockets. In comparison, if you place down your power core against a fully paneled power core, it will instantly be destroyed. Surprisingly, besides the power core itself, the dart is the best and most effective power core slayer. It can take one down in two seconds flat, and it only takes two rockets to do so. You have three rockets at your disposal, as well as the kamikaze aspect involving the dart itself. So technically, that's four explosives in one. Just ensure that two of these hit the power core and it's lights out. You can find the times of the rest of the score streaks at the end of the video in my table. Now let's talk about specialist weapons. Each and every specialist weapon, with the exception of two, can take out a power core. The only weapons that can't do so are Firebreak's Purifier and Ruin's Gravity Spikes. 
In fact, the purifier doesn't even give hit marker sounds or even look like it's doing any damage whatsoever. It does do damage though. As you can see, after I use all the purifier's ammo and check with the black cell, it's reduced from 3 rockets down to 1. So it can weaken it up, but it will not destroy it. What floored me the most was the gravity spikes. I anticipated that this would be a one hit kill and it definitely wasn't. In fact, and hold on to your seats here, on a freshly deployed power core, the gravity spikes will do no damage at all. Now I can't tell you this outrageous claim without showing proof. So first, watch here as I show that the 48 dredge LMG takes 54 out of its 84 bullets to destroy a power core. Now watch as I do the gravity spikes here on a fresh power core. Not only is it not destroyed instantly, but after picking up a black cell launcher and examining the stats, you can see here that it still takes 3 rockets to destroy, which means the gravity spikes did nothing. To further back up this ridiculousness, I then finish the power core off with the 48 dredge. And look at this, it still takes 54 out of the 84 bullets to destroy, even after the gravity spikes. That confirms that the gravity spike does zero damage to a fresh power core. Notice I keep saying fresh though. If you have a keen eye, you may have noticed that the gravity spikes did knock off all four panels on the power core, despite doing no damage. Remember when I said the panels can affect damage earlier? Well here's my justification. So watch here as I knock off all four panels of this power core, and then show that it still takes three rockets to destroy. Now with all the panels removed, the gravity spikes will instantly take out the power core. So certain score streaks and specialist weapons will destroy a power core only if the panels are all off. If you happen to find yourself with the gravity spikes against a fully paneled power core and you have C4 equipped, one C4 blast will take off all four panels at once, thus allowing the gravity spikes to finish it off instantly. A deployed RC car will also destroy all four panels, but this isn't viable at all since your actual body will likely be nowhere near the power core itself. Next, Outrider Sparrow only takes four arrows, but you have to hit it directly, and the drawback time and precision required to use the bow makes this not very ideal. It does clock in at a swift time of 5.2 seconds. Seraph's Annihilator and Prophet's Tempest both can take out the power core in four shots, with the Tempest being slightly faster at 2.55 seconds, whereas the Annihilator is 2.97 seconds. It's a lot easier to hit a Tempest shot than it is with the Annihilator though. Surprisingly, Nomad's Hive Pods can take out a power core in three pods. If you shoot these as fast as you can, it'll take a flat three seconds to take out the power core. It should be of no surprise that Reaper's Scythe can take out a power core quickly, at 2.27 seconds and in 46 bullets. However, far above all these are Spectre's Ripper and Battery's War Machine. The Ripper will destroy a power core in only five slashes, which only takes 1.85 seconds. More impressively than that is the War Machine. I had to pick my jaw off the floor after I found out that it gets destroyed in two grenades. And this clocks in at a crackhead pro speed of 0.78 seconds. You must direct hit it though, as a bounce grenade will do not much damage at all. The issue with the specialist weapons is that you'll never know when a power core is going to be called in. Even though you can destroy one in less than one second with the war machine, what are you going to do? Hold on to your specialist weapon each and every game the entire match in hopes that a power core gets called in? That'll only hinder you the entire game. Even if you use the free-for-all method I discussed earlier, you'll still have to do the same thing and hoard your specialist weapon. With a little bit of strategy though, we can make this work. So now the power core destroying class setup. Based on all my testing, I've concluded that this is the best class setup if you want to destroy a power core. For weapon, I recommend the Dingo LMG with rapid fire and FMJ. The Dingo only needs 54 bullets to take out a power core, so extended mags isn't necessary, saving you 2 points in your class. For perks, in tier 3, you absolutely need Engineer. The ability to reroll your care packages in free-for-all mode as well as to know where the power core is at all times is a must. I also recommend Dead Silence, which will help you counter the sound whores that may intercept you on your way towards the power core. In tier 2, you absolutely 100% need the Hardwired perk. This will allow you to call in score streaks, use specialist weapons, and basically be immune to the power core. I strongly advise placing a trophy system on your class as well. When you reach a power core in free-for-all mode, you can throw down a trophy system to absorb rockets shot by scallywags with the black cell who don't know any better. If you plan to do this in game modes other than free-for-all, I suggest equipping a black cell launcher yourself. Despite all the negative things I said about it, you can still use it to determine when there's one shot left by looking at the data screen. If your teammates are shooting at the power core, lock onto it and hold your fire until the rocket count drops to one. Then fire away and gank it from your teammates. For the last point, you need a tier one perk. 
and this is really up to you. The ghost perk is handy for getting to the power core with some stealth, but does nothing for you when you're actively destroying it since you won't be moving. I'll typically use Flak Jacket, just in case you get caught in the crossfire of an incoming rocket or grenade. For score streaks, you need the UAV, the care package, and the dart. For a specialist, you'll want Spectre's Ripper. This class gives you the best shot at destroying a power core. If you go the free-for-all method in an attempt to give the enemy a care package, you'll want to earn both the care package and the dart with your care package class setup. By the time you achieve this, you should have earned the Ripper as well. It's free-for-all and team deathmatch that are the fastest game modes to earn your specialist weapons and abilities. As you can see here, the Ripper is earned the fastest out of any weapon by far at 1 minute and 42 seconds without overclock. Once you get the care package, swap to your power core destruction class and then call in the care package. That way, you can not only reroll the care package should it not be a power core, but you can also be prepared and be on guard should it happen to be the power core. If it is one, once your enemy picks it up, you have a few options depending on where they call it in it. The number one issue I see people have is actually getting to the power core. I'll always read that people recommend the overdrive ability to help you, but this still doesn't help you get by the enemies. The better method is to use the dark score streak. If you see that the power core is halfway across the map, do not risk going there. Why walk when you can fly? Call in your dart and safely fly it there and take it out in two rockets. If the power core happens to be deployed close by, you have a few options. You can use the ripper and slash it five times to destroy it in less than two seconds, or you can try to shoot it with your dingo if you don't feel confident you can get right up next to it. Hopefully all of my testing, class setups, and advice will aid you in being prepared for the opportunity of finding and destroying five power cores. If you don't feel confident in earning care packages in free-for-all mode, I strongly suggest playing kill confirmed or domination. Ground War is also a great mode for finding power cores. You can pretty much find them in any game mode, they're just incredibly rare. I've even seen two in Search and Destroy. One important thing to note, should you get put into a game in progress where your team is getting cold cocked into oblivion, stick it out. If you see haters and raps, chances are you may see some power cores as well. So after the outro, you'll find my chart with all the relevant weapons, score streaks, and specialist weapons and how long each takes to destroy a power core. Now to close this video, I'll show you my fifth and final power core destruction. When I completed this challenge, I hadn't done any of this testing, and as such, I was completely oblivious to the best methods. I did manage to do it using the free-for-all care package method, but my way of destroying the power core was very risky, considering I didn't even have FMJ on my weapon, hardwired, or any other essential thing to help me out. Don't make the same mistake I did. Be prepared. Today's preparation determines tomorrow's achievement.